I came to Queens College as a transfer from Antioch. Well, I went to Antioch in 1957, and the first day that we were at Antioch as freshmen, our senior advisor comes and says, uh, first sentence, welcome to Antioch. Probably the second or third sentence is, I want to let you guys know that there are two barbers in town, and one of them discriminates against Negroes, and we are boycotting that barber shop. So here I was, I'd never done anything in civil rights. I came to Antioch because it was a work-study school, I was looking forward to it, and I was being recruited into participating in a civil rights boycott. 1957, that was very radical. But that was very exciting, and that's how I met Steve Schwerner. I had joined, volunteered for Freedom Summer, originally in voter registration, but had been asked by Mickey and Rita Schwerner to come down to their project area and they asked me and my wife, Betty, to uh, be the coordinators of the Freedom School there. Mickey and Rita Schwerner were the staff people for CORE, Congress of Racial Equality, and they were in charge of the Meridian Project. Mickey Schwerner's older brother, Steve Schwerner, who I knew from Antioch, he was teaching here at Queens College. Andy Goodman was an undergraduate here at Queens College, so that there was this whole Queens College group uh, who connected the first week in orientation. Uh, at the end of the first week in orientation, uh, Mickey Schwerner, James Cheney, and Andy Goodman went down to Mississippi because one of the sites that was going to be used for Freedom School and for voter registration, a church in Neshoba County, had been burned down. So they were going down to check it out and to find out if there was a suitable alternative in that area to, to do some of the project activities. And that's when they got arrested and then turned over to the Klan and, and killed. It was scary, it was sad, uh, but we were going down to do a job and we were not going to get turned around because of that. Betty and I could have gone back to New York the next day or the next week. So the whole idea of fear and, and tension and pressure, we quickly learned that it was more on the people who were going to stay there. They had a house, they had jobs, they had family. They were risking far more than we ever risked. And that really set the tone for the whole time. I did not think of it as a historic time. I just like taking pictures. I often carry a camera just as sort of a record or nostalgia. So I came back with 20 rolls of film. So I have this wonderful collection of pictures. I found two or three boxes of materials in the back of my closet. I didn't realize that I had been such a collier when I retired. My wife said, clean out your closet. And what those materials were, were a lot of the pictures, a lot of original documents. They were letters that I had written. They were letters that I had gotten. They were hate mail that had been sent to my parents. And they were just terrific. My uh, original donation has served as a, uh, a core for other Queens College activists to donate materials. And now it's a pretty big collection. Do students at Queens College know the name of the clock tower at Queens College? Unfortunately not. I very seldom focus about talking about Goodman, Cheney, and Schwerner. But on the other hand, when their history is lost, when the whole history about Freedom Summer and the Civil Rights Movement and the involvement of many Queens College students in the struggles of 63 and 64 and 65, that's sad to me. We went to Mississippi to try and make the world a better world. We accomplished some things, but we didn't do the whole job. And I strongly believe that people in power don't give up their power. People with privilege fight to keep their privilege, and they never give up. They never give up. So you can't take anything for granted. So the struggle is continuous. Uh, whether it's voting rights or immigrant rights or gay rights, there's still lots of problems so what are you going to do about it?